So, my name is Liam Koneman. I'm the author of the upcoming novel The Arena of the Unwell, which is a book that follows a young man called Noah as he kind of follows his favourite band on their reunion tour and is steadily drawn into the toxic relationship between two older men in the indie music scene. And it's exploring queerness and masculinity, um, obsession, mental health, all very positive topics. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting exploring these themes from two separate, um, two separate mediums, because I was working on the novel for a lot longer than I was working on the pocket essay. Um, and so these themes had kind of been percolating away in fiction for a while, but I had kind of not intended to write so much about gender and particularly about transness. Um, but when the opportunity to write the appendix for 404 Inc. came about, I felt that I was more ready to um, own my own trans masculinity and to deal with some of the, the hardships that I had experienced as a trans person um, and then reframe that into something more positive. And I think having done that, when I was editing the novel, it was um, a good process for me because I was allowed to make it more queer. I had been previously a bit sort of anxious about writing too, too queer because I was, yeah, a bit, I don't know, still processing that, I think, myself. And yeah, it just really freed me up to be more um, sort of uncompromising in that regard. Cool. Yeah, so I work in um, music journalism. I've done freelance music journalism since I moved to London just about, about nine years ago now. And it was just such a rich environment for stories and for interpersonal relationships because it is quite charged a lot of the time. Um, you know, there's a lot of drinking involved. There's a lot of substance abuse in the industry at large. And those really um, contribute to some very fractious relationships. Uh, and at the same time, I noticed a trend in some of the people that were very enthusiastic about music and very obsessed with particular bands. And I started to think about what it is that draws people to particular bands and draws people to this uh, obsessive fandom. Um, and at the same time, it was something that I just kind of wanted to get done. It was something that I think about all the time. And it just felt like that story needed to be sort of removed from me before I moved on to other things. Um, and at, at the same time as well, it's a very, very straight scene, the indie music scene, particularly in London. Um, and it's also a very white scene as well. And it's quite um, a small demographic. And so I kind of reframed it for myself into this more, I mean, it's certainly not utopian because some people are very depressed in the book, but I just decided to make as many people as I wanted gay. Um, and just decided that would be fine. <laughs> and it was. <laughs> God, that's always such a tough question. <laughs> I love Jennifer Egan. A Visit from the Goon Squad is a big, a big influence on um, the arena of the unwell. Uh, I love that her sort of freedom with form and style and that she can just write something completely different all the time and still make it incredible, always. Um, I think in terms of the book itself, it's so much more influenced by like music writing and by, you know, things that have been in the NME or that kind of thing over the years. Um, and obviously the film with Mel and I is a big, a big sort of thematic influence. <laughs> um, yeah, who else have I been reading of late? Eliza Clark's Boy Parts was obviously one of the great books of, of recent years. Um, there's just so much stuff coming out from independent publishers in general, especially newer independent publishers like Cypher Press. Um, 100 Boyfriends is one of the greatest books possibly ever. And yeah, there's a lot of like queer writing that I've really kind of felt emboldened by, you know, obviously Detransition Baby by Tori Peters, uh, Paul Text Form for Mortal Girl by Andrea Lawler, just all of these yeah, these just very like openly queer books have been really, really heartening to see.